So, uh, moving on with access control, although not really moving on, just expanding uh, some of our uh, division of uh, the access control controls divisions into uh, administrative, technical, and, and physical, looking more uh, in, in more depth into the um, administrative area and as I say you know this is um, you know think think policy in this area but it covers an awful lot um, consider what we need to have in terms of supervision um, and and you know how does that flow down from from the top um, how is uh, senior management uh, you know, well, the C-suite level addressing senior management, how is senior management addressing middle management, how are the middle managers addressing uh, the uh, supervisors, uh, foremen, whatever, for uh, frontline operations, and, you know, in ensuring that the policies are understood at these levels, are, are communicated from one level to another um, when uh, you know we're we're dealing with the issues of of policy um, and uh, in in a sense that is related to what we want to see in terms of personnel controls um, the uh, controls with regard to hiring with regard to firing with regard to discipline with regard to training with regard to, you know, all kinds of issues here um, dealing with our our personnel and and you know there are controls and safeguards in regard to uh, our our personnel our employees our uh, well you know of course it, it goes further it goes to contractors it goes to vendors it goes to customers it you know any you know any people that we are dealing with um, do we effectively communicate to those people the expectations that we have, the controls that are in place, the controls and safeguards that they uh, should be, must be um, applying uh, when they are uh, working for us, dealing with us, uh, you know, all, all of these sorts of issues. Um, so, you know, Supervision uh, comes into that. That is that is part of our personnel controls, but not the only part. And and uh, there are all of these issues that we need to pay attention to, and they all come under the administrative banner. Um, security awareness training. Uh, so again, you know the 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 training um, of expectations of the policies, the understanding of policy, uh, the understanding of, of regulations or um, uh, acceptable uh, use policies. Um, uh, somebody, uh, I, I heard it says something about behavioral expectations and, and that's, sort of, you know, acceptable use is, is the more acceptable, at least traditional term. And some people may think that, you know, behavioral expectations may, may expand on that. But, you know, basically this is the same thing. We are talking about what do we expect people to do? What is acceptable uh, for people to do? What is acceptable behavior um, in regard to the work that they are doing, the non-work that they are doing, which may um, uh, publicize uh, some of our information. Um, in, in ways that we don't expect, don't want, um, you know, all kinds of, of issues here. And as, as we went through before in uh, the security management area, the importance of security awareness training. Don't just brush it aside. No, it's not perfect. Uh, yes, it's not perfect. You have to have backstops. You have to have layered security. We talk about defense in depth. We talk about layered security. You, you have to have layers of controls, layers of uh, countermeasures, safeguards um, in, in place to cover the faults in any one area. But nothing is perfect. 
and and certainly security awareness training is one of the most effective and, and definitely one of the most cost effective ways of ensuring um, that we are doing the right thing with regard to security. Um, if we are are not telling our people, you know, they may be surprised when we come along and get upset about something that they are doing because they didn't realize the implication of it. How, how could they know? You know, if they are not told, if they are not trained in what is the, uh, what are the risks? What are our concerns? What, what do we consider acceptable and why? You know, uh, the, making them aware of, of the threats. Um, you know, I'm, I'm doing uh, very, very simplistic uh, security seminars for uh, my fellow seniors, for uh, community groups, for um, uh, churches, what have you, um, these days. And this is, you know, for anybody who, you know, even who owns a phone, uh, uh, you know, there are, there are threats these days uh, coming via calls, uh, coming via text messages, coming via email. Um, and some of the people who come to the seminars they're you know obviously walking in they're thinking you know you know we we're we're pretty good at this we we know this you know and and, and I don't have to start you know keep on talking for too long before I run into something that it's sort of like they suddenly sit up and take notice oh I didn't realize that that was a problem yes you know people don't realize it's a problem unless they've been told you know we we are the specialists we go out and and try and research this. The normal population doesn't. So our our employees, our contractors, our vendors, even sometimes our security vendors. I can tell you a few stories about them. But yeah, you know, I mean, there is the standard joke. Uh, what's the difference between a computer salesman and a used car salesman? Well, basically, a used car salesman can drive and knows when he's lying to you. So, you know, you know, there are a lot of people in, in sales and marketing staffs who are hired for their sales and marketing skills. And that is, you know, they are good at dealing with people. They don't necessarily understand all of the implications of what they are, in fact, selling. So, you know, we, we have people working for us, working with us who do not fully understand you know what what they are doing what what we are doing what is is going on you know all the ins and outs of what's going on here and and you know maybe we should be including that in our security awareness training um testing of all of these areas testing of uh areas of supervision and and controls of of supervision uh, testing of our personnel controls. Are they effective? Are they being followed? You know, are, are people doing that? Are our people thinking, well, you know, this really isn't important. I don't need to do it every time. And, you know, if they don't do it every time, maybe that's the time something skips by them. Uh, testing our security awareness training. Are the messages that we think we are promulgating the ones that are getting across to people? Uh, so testing, 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 making sure that um, we are doing the right thing, that what we, we think we are doing is, is what is actually happening. And once again, it all comes back to the policies and procedures. And, and we may have to go back and revisit our policies and procedures if we find that what we are doing is, is in, based on the existing policies and procedures is ineffective. But, you know, primarily, are we effectively communicating our policies and procedures throughout all of our personnel? All of our, our administrative, you know, our administrative controls are based in our policies and procedures.